Yeah, welcome back, students. Now, in continuation to chapter one, real numbers, we have done exercise one point one, one point two. So today we are going to start with exercise one point three. This is basically revisiting irrational numbers. Now, before I start this, in the previous class we have discussed and given you these practice questions. There were five questions. There were five questions. Now the answers of those five questions are question number one, where we have to find out the HCF of the smallest prime number and the smallest composite number. This is two. For question number two, we have to find out the HCF of ninety one and twenty six. The answer is thirteen. For question number three. Where we have to find out the HCF and LCM of 90 and 144 by prime factorization method. HCF is 18 and LCM is 720. Question number four, you can do it yourself as we have discussed in the previous episode. Now, question number five, using Euclid's algorithm, find the HCF of 1656 and 4025. when you find out you will get the hcf as 23 so students after this we start there is one theorem before we start with the next exercise theorem 1.3 let p be a prime number if p divides a square then p divides a that means if p is dividing square of a number like 5 into 5 is being divided by 5 then P also divides a, so P is dividing five. So the theorem is: let P be a prime number. If P divides a square, then P divides a, where a is any positive integer. Now, using this, we have to start with the question of the exercise one point three. We will solve question one and two, and on the similar pattern, you can solve question number three yourself. Now the question number one is prove that root five is irrational. Whenever you have to prove this kind of question, we have to do using contradiction method. That is, we assume that this number is rational, and then we prove that whatever is our assumption is wrong, and hence assumption becomes wrong, and it is a contradiction, and we get that root five is an irrational number. So to write this, we will be writing like this. Let us assume, to the contrary, that root five is rational. That is, we can find integers a and b such that root five is equal to a by b, where b is not equal to zero. So this is our assumption. Now we proceed further. suppose a and b have a common factor other than 1 then we can divide by the common factor and assume that a and b are coprimes coprimes mean they don't have any common factor so if they are coprimes then we can write 5 b times root 5 is equal to a now we square both sides squaring on both sides and rearranging we get that 5b square is equal to a square we have squared both the sides therefore a square is divisible by 5 and this is by the theorem what we have discussed just now that let p be a prime number if p divides a square then p also divides a so we have to use this theorem and we need need to write it over here it follows that a is also divisible by 5 hence we can write a is equal to 5c for some integer c now we square it again 5 b square is equal to 25c square which gives us b square is equal to 5c square this means that b square is divisible by 5 so b is also divisible by 5 this is the most important step students we have got a is equal to 5c and we substitute this value for some integer c so we get here we substitute this value over here 5b square is equal to a square 
So we get 5b square is equal to 25c square. So we get b square is equal to 5c square. This means that b square is divisible by 5. So b is also divisible by 5. Therefore, a and b have at least 5 as a common factor. That is according to the theorem. But this contradicts the fact that A and B are co-prime. This is very important to understand that we have assumed A and B are co-prime and here we are getting that 5 is a common factor. This contradiction has arisen because of our incorrect assumption that root 5 is rational. So we conclude that root 5 is an irrational number. So students, this is the contradiction. The basic contradiction is that a and B have at least 5 as a common factor, but we have assumed that A and B are co-primes. This is a contradiction and because of our incorrect assumption that root 5 is rational, hence we say that root 5 is an irrational number. I hope you must have understood this question. Now, moving on to question number 2. Prove that 3 plus 2 root 5 is irrational. Now, in the question 1, it was only root 5 and here it is 3 plus 2 root 5 is an irrational number. Now, for proving this, we proceed, proceed in this way. We assume, let us assume to the contrary that 3 plus 2 root 5 is rational. Again, we assume that this is rational. That is, we can find co-prime A and B such that 3 plus 2 root 5 is equal to a by b where b is not equal to 0 because if the denominator becomes equal to 0 then it is no more a rational number. Now we rearrange this term 3 minus a by b is equal to minus 2 root 5. This again rearrangement will give us root 5 is equal to 1 by 2 we have because of this minus we have interchanged these two a by b minus 3 or we can say a by 2b minus 3 by 2. Now students, we know that a and b are integers. So if a and b are integers, a upon 2b minus 3 by 2 is a rational number. Since a and b are integers, so a upon 2b minus 3 by 2 is a rational number. And if this is a rational, then root 5 is also a rational number. But this contradicts the fact that root 5 is irrational. Hence, our assumption is incorrect and 3 plus 2 root 5 is an irrational number. So in this question, one, after the rearrangement, this is the most important step, students. After the rearrangement, this is an irrational number, this is a rational number. They cannot be equal. Since they cannot be equal, it is a contradiction and hence, we can rewrite the question like this. Now, question number three. Prove that the following are irrational numbers. 1 upon root 2. You can rationalize it by multiplying. I'll give you hints how to solve this question. 1 upon root 2. So you can multiply. So this is root 2 by 2. Then in the similar way as we have done the previous question, you can do that. B part 7 root 5. It can be done in the similar way. And 6 plus root 2. That is also the question which can be done in the similar way. So students try out these questions yourself. Now moving ahead. Revisiting rational numbers and their decimal expansions. You have studied in the lower classes that how to make denominator or how to convert decimal into the fractions. I will give you some hints about it. Suppose you have number 0 0.35. I can rewrite this as 35 by 100. We can cancel by 5, 7, 20. So the answer is 7 by 20. This all thing you have done in the previous exercise. Now we are going to do a theorem 1.5 on page number 16. This says that let x be a rational number 
whose decimal expansion terminates then x can be expressed in the form of p by q where p and q are co prime and the prime factorization of q is in the form of 2 raised to the power n into 5 raised to the power n dear students what is the basic meaning of this that if denominator is a multiple of 2s and 5s only denominator is a multiple of 2s and 5s only then it is terminating if along with 2 and 5 you have some other factor like 3 7 anything like that then it becomes a non terminating fraction moving on to exercise 1.4 Without actually performing the long division, state whether the following rational numbers will have a terminating decimal expansion or a non-terminating repeating decimal expansions. So without actually calculating, we have to calculate, we have to find out whether it is a decimal terminating decimal or a non-terminating decimal. So let us take up questions from exercise 1.4. The first part is 13 upon 3125. Let us find out the factors of 3125. We divide by 5, 625, again with 5, 125, again with 5. And again with 5. So we have got 13 upon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 raised to the power 5. So if this is only 5, this is terminating. Question 2 17 upon 8, which can be written as 17 upon 2 cube. This is also terminating question 3 64 upon 455 64 upon this is 5 into 7 into 13 now since we have got 7 and 13 this is non terminating repeating Fourth part, 15 upon 1600. Zero, zero. It's very clear from here. It's 15. This is 16 into 100. 16 is 2 raised to the power 4 and 100 is 10 into 10. So they are all multiples of 2s and 5s. This is also terminating. Fifth part, 23 upon 2 cube into 5 square. This is also terminating. Six part 129 upon 2 square 5 raised to the power 7 and 7 raised to the power 5. Since we have got 7 this is non terminating. Seventh part I think I left one part in between. This is eighth part. Six upon fifteen. So this will become two by five. This is also terminating. So like this you can find out the other parts. Now students let us go to the next question. It says write down the decimal expansion of those rational numbers in question number 1 which have terminating decimal expansions. So wherever you have terminating decimal expansions we need to write down their decimal expansions. So let us go back that's what I left some space over here. Let's go back to question number 1. This was terminating. If we have to convert 
this and convert into decimal we need to make this a multiple of 10 so for that 13 upon 5 raised to the power 5 we multiply with 2 raised to the power 5 2 raised to the power 5 this becomes 416 upon 10 raised to the power 5 so it will become 0.00416 here it is second part was 17 upon 2 cube so we multiply with 5 cube upon 5 cube this becomes 2125 upon 10 cube this is 2.125 because of this see again what we have done in this in the first question it was 5 raised to the power 5 so we multiplied the numerator and denominator with 2 raised to the power 5 this became 2 uh, 416 upon 10 raised to the power 5 so this is 0 0.00416 in the second one it was 17 upon 2 cube so we have multiplied with 5 cube so this became 2125 upon 10 cube so this is 2.125 this third one is non terminating so we just leave it fourth one this is 15 upon 2 raised to the power 4 into 10 into 10. In this case, to make this 10, we have to multiply with 5 raised to the power 4 upon 5 raised to the power 4. And answer will be 0 0.009375. You can calculate that. For this one, 23 upon 23 upon 2 cube into 5 square we need to multiply with 5 by 5 this becomes 115 upon 10 cube so this is 0 0.115 this is non terminating now the last one 6 upon 15 here we can multiply with 2 by 2 and we get 4 upon 10 so this makes it 0 0.4 so I hope students you must have understood how do we convert a question into decimal if it is a non-terminating we cannot convert if it is terminating then this is the way we can convert. So now moving on to question number 3. The following real numbers have decimal expansion as given below. In each can you decide whether they are rational or not. If they are rational and of the form P by Q, what do you say about the prime factors of Q? Number 1, 43.123456789. This is, this is a terminating decimal. So, we can say that its prime factors are multiples of 2's and 5's. This is a non-terminating, so we cannot say and this is also non terminating and repeating so its factors will also have some other factor other than 2 and 5 so students you have seen that how do we find out whether it is a terminating decimal or a non terminating decimal i hope you must have understood the way we have to find out whether the number is a rational number or irrational number in the next episode, we'll give you some extra questions and till then, keep watching and keep practicing real numbers. Thank you for being there.